Hi, and welcome to the next section and um, the second section on the comparison between um, maximum likelihood estimation in statistics and empirical risk minimization in machinery. So here we will also consider a correspondence between Laplacian errors and the L1 loss function ML. Um, and we will furthermore uh, study the correspondence between Bernoulli distributed targets and um, the Bernoulli loss and see a further important correspondence, which also at the end will give rise to the specific formula of the Bernoulli or log loss, uh, which we haven't really understood that well before. And we can now understand this uh, much better by considering this. Um, well, it's basically the minus log of the um, error distribution of uh, Bernoulli distributed targets. Before we do this, um, let's wrap up the regression case. So we studied before the case of uh, normally distributed errors and the L2 loss. I'll now consider the case of uh, Laplacian errors. So where the error distribution has this density here, which basically looks like a, an uh, Gaussian distribution, but we don't have these um, squared terms here in the X, but we have this absolute of X guy here in the X term. And again, if we, um, if we make an assumption of additive errors as before, but now assume that our error distribution follows this Laplacian distribution, we do minus log of things. I'm not going to read this out even more because this is completely analogous to what we did before uh, for the L2 Gaussian case. The negative log likelihood will again simplify to this inner part here of the X function of the distribution. And this, if we now get rid of all multiplicative and additive constants, we will simply be left with this absolute difference here for each observation between true targets and predicted scores. And this is simply the L1 loss um, from a machine learning perspective. Again, we can simulate this before, as we can simulate this um, empirically, at least a bit for a specific case, with a simple linear model. Um, we do linear regression now under uh, L2 loss, and we can now plot again the empirical error distribution, which you can see on the left hand side here, and the true residuals, which we would, yeah, we can plot the empirical errors here on the left hand side, and we can compare with the help of a Q, Q plot the empirical residuals versus the theoretical quantiles of a Laplacian distribution, and you can see that this at least roughly coincides again. There are other loss functions that do not correspond um, to proper real error densities. So we can do the same empirical analysis as before um, now for the Huber loss. Um, so in the Q, Q plot, we now um, show the residuals um, that we get from optimizing this linear regression model here now with the Huber loss. And we compare that against the quantiles of a normal, but I can't really now give you a perfect um, distribution that we can compare to, we can only see that this is not really normally distributed anymore. It's, uh, it's not that far off. You can see this, um, you can see th some problems here, mainly in the tails, uh, but we can't really derive a neat little distribution of formula for the distribution of the errors that, that would correspond to the Huber loss. Let's put it like that. More importantly, what I now want to do on the last slides is I want to basically derive the formula of the log loss or of the Bernoulli loss by um, taking a statistical perspective of classification and by considering the logistic regression model. Actually, we don't even have to take the logistic regression model. We just have to assume that the outputs of our statistical uh, classification model now are Bernoulli distributed. So um, as before, I will consider y given x and I now will make a distributional assumption about y given x. And because I now want to assume that we are now in a classification, these two guys here, uh, well, th sorry, this guy here um, will have two classes. Uh, so it will have a, a zero and a one that it can assume. I will now um, write this as a Bernoulli distribution or a conditional Bernoulli distribution, conditional on x, where the true probability of y being equal to one is determined by this pi true of x function here. Yeah? So this is a function of x uh, because we are in, in this conditional distribution that depends on the value of x. Uh, so we, I have my probability, my true probability model here on the inside so that every y given x has a certain Bernoulli distribution uh, where the success probability can depend on x. 
if I now write down the negative like likelihood of this model here, yeah, this is, um, yeah, it's not, not difficult, but I guess you have to know one trick of doing that. So this is the abstract form here of the negative log likelihood. Um, and I now have to plug in here the Bernoulli model. And here you have to do one little trick. We know that for a positive case, the probability is exactly pi of x. And for a negative case, the probability is one minus pi of x. And um, in order to put this together into one uh, neat little term without um, specifying this uh, in a case by case basis. So we usually do this trick here that we say this is pi of x to the power of y times one minus pi of x to the power of one minus y. Um, why does that work? Well, let's now do a case by case analysis of this here. So if y is one, so if this is a positive case, uh, if the ith observation really is uh, positively labeled, what happens now? One minus y will become zero. So this thing here will be one and yeah, we can completely disregard it. So the only thing that is left is pi of x, well, to the power of one, which is simply pi of x. If y is negatively labeled, this here will be zero. So this drops out, this will be one, and the only thing we will be left with is one minus pi of x. So apparently this neatly works out and we can write it yeah, in one unifying formula like that. Now, another nice thing that happens is that this thing here on the inside is kind of pretty compatible, so to speak, with the log function. So we can now draw the log on the inside of things here. So we can write this also as minus y times log of pi x minus one minus y. So again, here, this exponent log of one minus pi of x. So this also helps us a bit. And now we are basically done. The only thing we will now do is we will now call this thing here, which measures this um, deviation between the predicted probabilities pi of x and our zero one class labels. We'll just give it a name and we call this the Bernoulli loss and because it's the associated uh, loss with this Bernoulli, with this uh, Bernoulli distributional model, or you can call it the log loss uh, because uh, our log uh, prominently occurs on the inside of the definition of that loss function, or you can call it the binomial loss. Uh. What you should also note is that we haven't really made any assumptions of uh, regarding the functional form of that pi of x here. So we didn't really need that this is a linear model. Uh. So we can basically do this for any type of um, zero one classification scenario. And this also um, shows us that the Bernoulli loss function is not really, doesn't really depend on um, the linear assumption in the logistic regression. It's combinable with any type of hypothesis space that we would like to use to model posterior zero one probabilities. Yeah? So it's combinable with neural networks, for example, with boosting and so on. So this gives now rise to this, uh, to this loss function here that we have uh, introduced before in a, another chapter, or sorry, in another section here in this uh, in this chapter without having really understood where the formula comes from. You can now kind of derive it from first principles by going from the reasonable intuitive Bernoulli distribution and then taking minus log of things. Okay, this ends the section here.